Multicolored line charts are a little gimmicky. After all, we don't need color to tell if a line is going up or down. However, it can be useful for encoding data that's outside of a threshold and can also speed up interpretation, especially if you use the familiar traffic light encoding. We have a few different approaches available for creating multicolored line charts, so let's take a look. I'm using some load data for a computer CPU taken at half hour intervals. Now the first chart formats the line in a gradient fill, and this is the simplest because it only requires one series. So let's insert our chart. It's just a line chart. And then we need to simply format the line. So I'm going to control one to open the format data series. I need the paint bucket icon. And here we want to choose gradient line. And all I need to do is format the colors for these gradient stops. So the first one selected, and here I want this one to be red. The next one, I need to move it down. In fact, I want it about 34%. And let's format the color for this one in yellow. This one I don't need, so I'm going to delete it. And the last one is going to be green. So you can see now our line is formatted. I want to change the axis maximum to 100. We can't have more than 100% CPU. Now the limitation with the gradient is that it's based on percentages as opposed to absolute values. And that means you can't format values above or below a threshold with a specific color. This can make updating the gradient stops for new data a potentially manual task. It really depends if you plan to update your chart with new data or not as to how user friendly this method will be. And the second option is to use multiple series. This requires the source data to be set up with each series in its own column. And you can see them here. I've got one for orange, yellow, and green. Now for ease of calculation, you can see I've got if formulas in each column. Each one is slightly different. But for ease of calculation, the green series plots every value. But the green series line is covered up by the yellow and orange series where appropriate. And you'll see that in a moment. So let's insert the chart. Insert another line chart. So it looks like we only have one series here. Let me make the chart a bit bigger. If I right click on the chart, we're going to select data. Now the first thing I want to do is delete the CPU load series. I don't actually need it in the chart. It's just in the table for the purpose of the calculation for the other series. The next thing I need to do is rearrange the order of the remaining series because you can see in the chart that the whole line is yellow. And that's because the green series, which is currently formatted yellow, we haven't changed it yet, is sitting on the bottom. So let me move that to the top and then we'll move this one up one as well. And now you can see if we look behind, we have three distinct colors for our lines, one for each series. So I click OK there. Now all I need to do is format the color of those lines. So control one to open the format pane. We're going to go to the line here and we're going to make this one green. And I'll select the next one. This one's going to be yellow and the last one is orange. Now we don't need this legend so I'm just going to select it and press delete. We'll format the axis again so that the maximum is 100 and our chart is done. Now the key here, let me close this down and move the chart across, is that these series overlap. So you can see 85 there is also present in the green series. Now if I were to delete the 85 in the green series, we'll end up with a gap here. And that's why you need to make sure that they overlap. So I can control Z to undo that. Now strictly speaking, I don't need all of these values because they're covered by the line. So I could delete them. The line remains the same. But like I said, I've used formulas to populate the values for each series, and it's just easier to leave those ones in. So that is the multicolor line chart where we've used three series, one for each color. A variation on this chart is to create a column chart. So I'm going to control D to duplicate that chart. And I'll just place it over the top because I don't have a lot of space. So let's modify the format of this chart. We'll change the chart type to a column chart and I'll click OK. Now we need to do some formatting because right now it looks a bit of a mess. So control one and here I want my series to be 100% overlapped and I'm going to change the gap width to 30 just because having narrow columns hurts my eyes. 
So now all I need to do is format the colors of those columns. So control one again, we'll go into the paint bucket. So the first one should be green and we want the border to be no line. Now, just to be clear on which series I'm selecting, I'm going to go to the format tab. I'm going to select it here. So this one's the yellow series. Now I can change that to yellow fill and I'll have no line on that as well. And the last series is orange anyway. So there you have a variation on the gradient fills in the line chart. Instead, we've got a column chart. With column charts, we can easily determine trends in our data because the top of the columns acts a bit like a line. So it really just depends on your preference, whether you use the line chart or the column chart. Okay, let's take a look at the last option. This one uses a stacked area chart for the threshold bands. And you'll notice here in the table that we've got three thresholds, green, yellow, and orange. And you'll notice that the value for the thresholds is the same all the way down the columns. The green threshold is anything below 80. The yellow threshold is anything between 80 and 90. Remember, it's a stacked chart, so we're adding these values together. So that will give us 90. And then finally, the orange threshold is anything between 90 and 100. So let's insert our chart. We want a stacked error chart, so this one here. Now we need to change this blue series to a line chart. So I'm going to right click, change series chart type. And here's my CPU load. I want that to be a line. And you can see automatically my stacked values look more like thresholds. So I'll click OK. Now all I need to do is format them. So again, control one to open the format dialog. Here I want my line color to be white. And then all I need to do is format the threshold. So this one's green. This one is yellow. And I'm just choosing pastel kind of variations of the colors so that it's not too bright and garish and in your face. And lastly, let's make this 100. We don't need the legend. We can always link the chart title to this cell here. The last thing I want to do is get rid of the grid lines. You can only just see them behind. So we'll deselect those and it just looks a bit neater. I hope you can make use of this technique, but don't get carried away using gradient fills, multicolored lines and columns, etc. Please only use them where they aid interpretation. Otherwise, they fall into the chart junk category, where at best they can make you look unprofessional and at worst, they make it difficult for your audience to interpret the chart. So go ahead and download the Excel file. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.